Welcome to LFN News, a production of LFN Media, bringing you the latest in celebrity news, with specific analysis to keep you in the know of what is going on around you. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our upcoming videos. We also encourage you to share your comments in the comment section below and let us know what you think about the issue under discussion and any other issue you may want us to discuss in the future. Many R. Kelly fans liken the harsh sentence in his recent case to a life sentence, arguing that in the unlikely event that the sentence is not overturned, the R&B king may not be released from prison until he is way in his 80s, thanks to the unfair 30-year jail sentence slapped on him by a New York federal judge. Analysts say, the 55-year-old might as well be looking at life behind bars if he loses the other three related cases in the upcoming months, as well as the much-anticipated appeal on the New York case. According to one of his attorneys, who was not involved in the New York trial in any way, the R&B King may have to seek a plea agreement in light of those unpleasant possibilities, guilty or not. Although this is seemingly unlikely, based on the positive energies around his pending appeal, one can only wonder whether it could be a practical option for him. By taking a closer look into Kelly's other pending trials, we just might get a hint at whether a plea deal could even be a viable alternative for the R&B King. On August 15, a federal trial against Kelly is scheduled to begin in Chicago and since many of his accusers actually reside in Chicago, there should be a particularly high level of attention to this case. Kelly is accused of allegedly fixing his 2008 state trial with two other defendants, which resulted in his acquittal. Federal charges are in the major leagues. It's a completely different ballgame for Kelly now, said Phil Turner, a former assistant U.S. attorney in Chicago. The federal charges will most definitely increase pressure on Kelly to seek a plea deal, which is what the overwhelming majority of defendants in federal cases do. Federal prosecutors are rarely in any rush to negotiate a deal so soon after filing charges, but they might eventually be open to one. Knowing how unpredictable celebrity trials can be, there might be a greater chance of an acquittal or a hung jury. The other two cases are state-level proceedings, a solicitation case in Hennepin County, Minnesota, and a multi-count abuse case in Cook County, Illinois, which includes Chicago. Both have been put on hold while the federal proceedings are being resolved. There are therefore, no scheduled trial dates either. In the face of his fans, the possibilities of R. Kelly choosing a plea deal look really slim, but experts argue chances her chooses a plea deal are now greater after the lengthy sentence handed down to him in New York. I suspect there have been discussions between Kelly's federal trial team lawyers and prosecutors, said Steve Greenberg, a longtime Kelly lawyer who represents Kelly in the Cook County case. According to Greenberg, although Jennifer Bonjean has insisted on an appeal, Kelly must decide whether accepting a compromise that involves further prison time is preferable to the prospect of succeeding in the Chicago federal case. Greenberg thinks that Kelly could still have a chance, though slim, at getting acquittals in Cook County and Minnesota state court since those cases against him are far weaker. According to Phil Turner, a former federal prosecutor in Chicago who is unrelated whatsoever to Kelly's prosecutions, if Kelly is found guilty in U.S. District Court in Chicago, his judge will most likely order that Kelly serves that sentence after his New York sentence is over, thus an implied life sentence. Turner stressed that while he anticipates that prosecution would request such a consecutive term, he believes if found guilty, the judge, though unlikely, may impose a concurrent sentence, which would mean they would be carried out concurrently. It's no wonder that Kelly's attorneys would only sign an agreement that called for sentences shorter than 30 years, and would not consent to anything that would result in an extension of the 30-year sentence. Additionally, they would require guarantees that the prosecution won't push for successive sentences. Turner claimed that Kelly would benefit from a bargain that eliminated the possibility of more trials because his counsel would be free to focus only on the New York appeal. Greenberg suggested that there was a chance Kelly may win that appeal. Turner on the other hand characterized it as improbable. However, 
Turner stated that Kelly would consider serving what his attorneys hoped would be lesser sentences in the other districts if that sentence were to be overturned. Chances that prosecutors decide to simply drop the other cases are equally slim. Any negotiations would be challenging because Kelly is accused in four different states, and his attorneys are expected to demand a single agreement that settles all the claims. Additionally, the prosecution would only agree to a plea bargain that included a hefty prison term. According to Turner, the common attitude at U.S. attorneys' offices is to continue to be tenacious and aggressive against all high-profile suspects. When it comes to Kelly, that mentality has been particularly pronounced. He noted that because U.S. attorneys' offices effectively have unlimited resources, the expense and length of a trial won't deter them in any way. Turner however believed that the state cases might be withdrawn, particularly if Kelly is found guilty in federal court in Chicago and sentenced to more years in jail. Their resources are far more constrained. They would be wasting their own money, he claimed. They must punish major offenses including killings. So they would most probably say, why invest our time and money in Kelly when he already faces decades in prison? One aspect that could push prosecution to push ahead with the other trials is the possibility that the New York convictions could be overturned, thanks to Bonjean's much-anticipated appeal. If state and federal prosecutors in Chicago decide to dismiss their charges and the verdicts in New York are overturned, Kelly might be released right away. Even if an appeals court ultimately throws out some convictions, winning verdicts and sentencing may be seen by prosecutors in each district as insurance that Kelly would still remain behind bars. Pleading guilty to the remaining charges would mean no more trials. It would also substantially reduce Kelly's legal bill, which he has occasionally found difficulty paying. Kelly would not, however, be guaranteed that the government wouldn't seek the worst penalties. He may still hope that by pleading guilty, judges would be more likely to give him sentences that fell within the lower range of the recommendations. All we can do for now is wait and see how these other cases play out. That's all we had for you today. Thank you for watching LFN News, a production of LFN Media, giving you another view of issues at hand. To get notified whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now and hit the notification icon. And remember to give us your comment on the subject matter below.